Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, my name is Fizla Sani and I am uh, uh, President of Supreme Court Kosovo. For me, it is a uh, great pleasure and honor to be here with you today to share the joy of this important historic event, which in the past 25 years made difference to the life of many nations around Europe, gave us a lesson, a lesson about value of life, liberty, and freedom. For more uh, now, as my English is limited, my speech will, will be addressed by my translator. Stay there. Go. Honorable attendees, ladies and gentlemen, dear friends, it is a pleasure and, feel, and I feel deeply honored to be here with you today. It was with great satisfaction for me to accept the invitation and have the opportunity to share this historic event, not only with the people of Germany, but with the entire Europe and world, since it bears great significance to, all, to us all. Always when visiting Berlin, crossing through the Brandenburg Gate, the symbol of reunite, reunite Germany, brings forth so many emotions and images to our mind. Emotions and images that now belong to our collective memory. The collapse of the Berlin Wall was the culminating point of the revolutionary changes sweeping East Central Europe. Reformers assumed power and ended more than 40 years of dictatorial communist rule. The revolutions that followed this gesture in Berlin marked the death of knell of communism in Europe, even though in some parts of it, Balkans in particular, the price to pay was very high. Loses too many, sufferings too much to bear, but liberty and freedom acquired taught us a lesson that freedom should not be taken as granted. We must become more vigilant to safeguard it, to value hum human life, to accept our differences and work to live in harmony with all. Ladies and gentlemen, moments of intense joy and freedom here in Berlin now, on this day, have been experienced by several generations of, at, of the last century in the south of Europe, and most recently in Central and Eastern Europe, and by my country in particular. Indeed, tearing down walls and building bridges has been the message that we perceived from this very important historic moment. 25 years later, the events of 1989 have lost none of their capacity to astonish. The sheer possibilities open at that time are enough to baffle even the knowledgeable observer. For those of us who lived through these events as they happened and had a certain ro role in shaping them, the enormity of what uh, transpired that fateful, fateful year becomes even more amazing as the time went by. With the years that followed, we took the courage to tear down the walls of mistrust, extreme nationalism, and hatred that led to the worst genocide in human history at the end of the 20th century. Yet, events that followed this very moment taught us a lesson, significance of which we are still trying to absorb that hatred generates fear, and fear, once given foothold, binds, consumes, and imprisons. Today, we know that democracy cannot flourish amid fear, liberty cannot bloom amid hate, and justice cannot take root amid rage. We must descend from the indifference. We must descend from the apathy. We must descend from the fear, the hatred, and the mistrust. We must descend from the poverty of uh, vision and the absence of moral leadership. We must descend because we can do better, because we have no choice but to do better if we want to be part of Europe. And we are part of Europe. Despite the turbulence of the past, our fates are bound together. We can run from each other, but we cannot escape each other. We will only attain freedom if we learn to appreciate what is different and master the courage to discover what the same is fundamentally. Our community's diversity offers so much richness and opportunity. 
we should and will work to have liberty for all. Thanks to this vision, messages of this historic event and commitment of uh, European leadership, led by Germany and other Western allies, our region today is experiencing a peace that I believe we together, we all together, should make a peace worth living. And it is not a coincidence the 25th anniversary of Germany's reunifications marked also the 15th anniversary of Germany's assistance and contribution initially for liberation of Kosovo, peace and stability, followed by huge investments in reconstruction of the country, development of economy and infrastructure. People of, or, uh, people of Kosovo are very, very grateful. Thus, although in first years of its being, since declaring independence in February 2008, Kosovo has been growing as a state. The country's leadership has pledged to uphold the rule of law and democratic standards with a commitment to build an effective and functioning democracy. In this process, as of 1999, the international community has played a vital role in laying the foundations for democratic governance, social equality, and the rule of law. At present, Kosovo has structure of governance, constitution, and a body of laws that encourage citizen participation, social equality, a free media, checks and balances, and an independent justice system. The scale of what we have already accomplished in such a short time allow us to embrace the future with well-based confidence and hope. However, despite these strong foundations, we are conscious that serious challenges remain. In Kosovo, more than anywhere else in Europe, the rule of law is in the making. As one of the world's youngest democracies, similar to other post-conflict settings, a gap remains between the rule of law, de jure, and the rule of law in praxis. The Republic is struggling with common matters of governance in transition, high unemployment rate, complex and serious challenges of property disputes, enormous backlogs, entrenched organized crime, corruption, a divisive war crimes caseload, and our political past. In being open about these issues, we can take measures needed to deal with them. As we are, and I can say that we are pleased with the contribution of International President Kosovo, are sitting us on the above and other issues of state building. Honorable participants, among the most important lessons to be drawn from the last 25 years is the necessity for mechanisms that can bring democracy to people who have never experienced it, and the philosophy characterized by a regard for the broadest possible liberty of the individual that can be established by good governance and genuine role of law institutions. The rule of law is essential cornerstone of any successful democratic system. A genuine democracy must rest on foundations that include not just free and fair elections, but also a rule-based society, effective governance, and a free market-based economic system. So to make progress requires a fo focused, honest, efficient, and law-abiding institutions and government officials which concentrate on economic growth and rule of law. We know that now, and we are committed to make them work. Certainly, Kosovo has made much progress in the past years, and these efforts have been applauded. But there is still much important work to be done. Rule of law and access to justice are among the main political conditions for Kosovo to be embraced in the European agenda underpinned by EU policy for Western Balkans. And almost all instruments under the stabilization and association process are open to Kosovo. We are aware that changes cannot happen overnight and that strengthening the rule of law is a long-term undertaking which has to gradually transform the attitudes and cultural mindsets that would lead us towards the path of growth and progress. We are aware that Kosovo's long-term future as a multi-ethnic, democratic, and prosperous country depends on continuing efforts of people of Kosovo supported by its Western allies and friends. This is a challenge that we are uh, rising among ourselves, removing past hurdles and creating new ways and means to create the European us. The European Kosovars, Albanians, Serbs, Gorani, 
Turks, Roma, and others. And yes, we are aware that due to our troubled history, the distrust between parties in conflict go deep and the challenge is awesome. We know, however, that in time things can improve. We need look no further than our own European continent, where once bitter enemies now work consciously with each other and for each other as friends and partners. The greatest salute to the memory of all of those who died and those who, whom they loved would be the achievement of agreement and peace. We have the will to doing that for us and our generation to come. People of Kosovo are committed to implement reforms, enhance and deepen collaboration in the path that takes us to Europe, contributing to much greater European philosophy of peace, democracy, stability, and harmony between all people, regardless of their race, ethnicity, religion, or geographical location. We are Europeans too. We are thankful to Germany, to this great nation, for past, present, and future contribution to peace and stability. As a nation, we are the oldest in the region, but the youngest as a state. We still need direction, assistance, observation, and above all, to be embraced within European family. The people of Kosovo are committed to development and positive change. We are Europe, Europeans too, and with mutual and unceasing efforts, Kosovo will become and has the desire to be an actual stability factor in the, in the heart of Europe. At the end, please accept once more my best wishes and happy 25th anniversary. Thank you for your attention.